Hi everybody, welcome to e-teaching resources. This is the second portion of the lesson on hot potato software version 7. In the first portion of the video, I have shown you how to go to hotpot.uvic.ca which you are seeing now uh, on your screen. So go to hotpot.uvic.ca and from where you have the download option for the software and you can download this. This is an open access software and you can download it. And for the users of Mac, you have five steps given here to follow to download this. Once you download this onto your uh, desktop, you will have this particular shortcut key that appears. The beauty of this is you can create uh, uh, question papers offline using this uh, hot pot. And uh, once when you, after creating the question paper using this uh, hot potatoes, once when you are done with it, only for launching the question paper, you need to get yourself connected with the internet. Now I show you the templates. These are the options available. JClose is to create a fill up question paper. This is how the template appears. Once I click on that, on this template, I can type my questions and get my questions created. And I have to save it in .jcl extension so that I can add it into the masher. Uh, well, now jmatch question, I can, I hit against jmatch. This is how the template appears. I can create options here for column A and column B, left side column and right side column. So I can save it as uh, .jmt extension and before I uh, save it on, uh, save it and re, uh, launch it as HTML version. Then jmix, jmix stands for a jumbled type of question paper that I can create. Now on your screen, you are seeing uh, how to, the template for creating jmix uh, question paper. Now I can type the question here. Uh, I can split the sentence into portions here one by one and I can type and I can save it as a JMix uh, um, uh, format. Then I can close it. J cross. All these things you will be seeing with demonstration because I've already created these questions. So I'm just showing you the template. This is really beautiful. So J cross is for creating crossword puzzle. You can create Sudoku using this. One option you can remember here that that is manage grid option. If you go to automatic grid maker option, you will arrive at this particular dialog box where you can type the words quickly and you can create a crossword puzzle automatically. You need not go and fix things. So it's as easy and simple as that. So that's how the crossword puzzle question appears. J quiz is for creating multiple choice questions. I clicked on J quiz. And here, see, these are the options available. I can create multiple choice. I can create short answer. I can make a hybrid. I can go for multi-select. Suppose one or more options are right. I can go for multi-select. This is how I have to add up questions. So number two, after finishing question one, typing the title of the question, typing question and answers I can fill here. If I want to give any feedback like incorrect, correct, I can do this. After uh, typing all the options, I have to check in, in any one of these options box because that option, I want to tell the template as a correct option. So uh, the template understands uh, the tick mark as the right answer. Now what I have to do is if I want to add questions, I have to go to this option, this arrow mark. So click on this arrow mark. It keeps grading, adding up the questions. Now I close this. I have created all these questions already. Uh, now J quiz, everything I have seen. So we are going to create the masher. So before creating the masher, let me show you how I have created all these questions. These are the templates. This first template we created in the first portion of the video, which you have watched already. And thanks for watching that. If you have not watched, kindly go and watch how I have created this template and how I have uh, arrived at this HTML format. So after creating that template, it appears uh, like this on the HTML format with the timer that we have actually set and with these background designs we have done and configured. It's very simple and easy we have done and I'm just showing uh, how the students will type the answers and check their answers. Um, you are seeing that I am typing the answers on the screen now. Uh, I am just typing two answers and I am leaving all the other questions. I am checking the questions. Suppose a student's answers only two questions. Those two questions are correct but the options, other options I have left out. So the score is 40. Some of the answers are incorrect. 
So it says that the answers are incorrect. That's the problem that comes. Incorrect answers have been left in the places for you to change. So I can even go and change the answers. The answers are not actually incorrect here. I didn't fill up. So this is a prompt I typed there. So that prompt appears on the screen now. Well, now I close this option and I move on to the other one to show you how to create a match the following. This is how you can create a match the following. This is the template. I typed it as uh, match the place with its playwrights in the title bar. And I have uh, typed as King Lear in the left side uh, column and in the right side column I have typed Shakespeare. Then left side waiting for Guru, right side Samuel Beckett, Pygmalion, George Bernard Shaw, she stoops to conquer Oliver Goldsmith and birthday party Harold Pinter. So I've created five questions here. I have already saved it. So I'm clicking on save as option just to show you in which file extension I have saved the file. So I have to save this file as .jmt extension. Only then I can add it into Masher. Uh, so I have asked, I have already saved it. I'm saying no and escaping. You are going to see how it appears. A uh, hit on this icon, a uh, hit on this icon will make me get the HTML format saved. So .htm extension stands for a HTML file that is also already saved by me. So it says the file already exists. So I'm not saving the file. So how it exists now you're going to see. This file is now saved in a HTML format. You are seeing that now. So this is how the file appears now. Match the following exercise. I can now fix. Now my student will see the screen like this. King Lear against that I'm placing Shakespeare. Waiting for Godot against which I'm placing Samuel Beckett. Pygmalion against which I'm placing George Bernard Shaw. And she stoops to conquer against which I'm placing um, Oliver Goldsmith and the birthday party I'm placing Harold Pinter. So I want to check the answers. My student will check the answers like this. Okay, score is 100. Correct. Well done, it says. So if my student, my student will do this exercise like this. And this exercise also separately can be shared to my student by um, hitting the share icon there, which is uh, seen on the right side corner just uh, prior to the three dots. I have three options given here when I hit the share option. One is mail, another one is OneNote and another one is Skype. So uh, if I have created a group mail of my class, I can hit on this and I can send it to my students separately also. I can send it as a separate uh, question or I can send it as a full question. So this is how I can send it. I have showed it to you. Now I go to MCQs. In MCQs, I can create multiple choice questions. Uh, so I just clicked on the MCQ template. I gave the title as choose the best answer. First question, I typed it as who translated of dermatology and the options I've given. These are the four options I've given. Derrida, Gayatri Spivak, Gramsci and Kafka. So I have given Gayatri Spivak in column B. So that's the correct answer. So I checked in the box against column B so that the template understands column B whatever is given in column B as right answer. So I have to be very careful in checking the boxes. So I have checked the box against Gayatri Spivak. So uh, now I will want to add the second question. See how the second question goes. Find abstract noun from the following. Now I have given four uh, words here. Table, happiness, rosy and team. So my students should find out happiness as the right answer. So I have uh, checked this box. The column B again I have given the correct answer. So I checked this box. So against a table, suppose my student uh, checks the, um, I mean ticks against a table, this prompt will appear. It is a common noun. The student will understand it's not an abstract noun. So student will start trying with further options. So here I not only teach abstract noun, but I also teach the other forms of nouns like common noun, proper noun. Against Rosie, I have given the prompt as proper noun. So when my student uh, uh, checks in this answer what happens my student will understand Rosie is a proper noun or it is not an abstract noun so it's a kind of a practice test that I can give to my students then team against team I have given it as a collective noun well so this is how it goes and I feel it's perfect and I've saved it already so if I want to say uh, I just show you how you have to save it so I go to save as a uh, option you have to save this file as .jqz format and you have to click on the save as I have already saved it I'm not uh, ticking that. So go to this option to save it also as a HTML format. 
So dot HTM that will help you to check how it will appear on your screen. I also repeat here to go to the option configure output. When you go to options and configure output, you can type uh, the exercise subtitle instructions. You can type prompts feedback will be already there by default and you need not touch on that and buttons. If you want to add a back button, you can add a back button so that your student can go to the previous question and to redo the question appearance i can set the color and i can also by this browse option i can uh, add a picture to the background instead of this color i can add a background picture that is possible navigator bar color i'm just showing to i'm changing and showing it to you just to demonstrate see this is how i can change previously it was like this previously it was like this so i go to the same one and i redo it so timer option i click on timer and this box I have to check and then I have to add the minutes. I have given only one minute, assigned one minute for taking up this task. So only two questions. So the student is expected to do it in one minute. So I have to okay it after doing all these things. Okay, so well, now I close it. It asks whether to save. As I have already saved the template, I say no and I come out. So now I click on MCQs. Now I click on MCQs. You see how these MCQs appear. Two questions I have created. So it shows one by two. That means there are two questions there. See, there are two questions. If I, if my students want to see all the questions, they can click on this show questions one by one. So they get, they can type the answers and they can go on. Well, now what I have to do is I have created that. I have created a crossword puzzle also. See how I have created a crossword puzzle. This is a crossword puzzle I have created. Go to manage grid option. And I've created a crossword puzzle uh, for planets. I've called it as common noun. So actually I have created it. So it says we've already created an automatic grid. So go to manage grid and type automatic grid. I have already described it in the previous portion of this video that how you have to create an automatic grid. Well, now you may refer to that. Then options, you can configure output the same way you can configure output. I did not touch any of these and then I saved it. Only thing is I can add a timer to this. So I can change the font and a timer option. Timer I have given one minute. So I set the time now. I okay it. Well, now it will appear only for one minute. Within one minute time, my students should do this uh, um, uh, crossword. It is, of course, it will look a bit, bit difficult now. So let me give them five minutes time. So five minutes time given for them. So I set the timer now, said okay. Now I close this. Yes, I want to make changes. So this is how the crossword puzzle will appear. See how beautifully it appears on the screen of my students. This is how it will appear. If my student clicks on this one, they will get a hint and the planet very close to the sun. A hint I have given there. So I can type it as Mercury. Once my student types Mercury, it gets entered there. See, the student can click on fourth option, the planet far away from the sun. Click on third option. So similarly, the uh, my student can go and finish up the entire crossword puzzle now jumbled i show you how to create a jumbled and jumbled i type the sentence like this one by one in the template rearrange the jumbled sentence is the title i have given here and richard is an expert software engineer of high repute that is the sentence i split it into words one by one in a vertical order richard in first line is in second line and in third line expert fourth line uh, software fifth line engineer of in the sixth line and uh, seven is high and refute is eight so this is how i have split the entire sentence for making it into jumble sentence well now let us see i have saved it and i have also saved it in html format when i save it how should i save it in which extension i should save it i should save it in dot jmx uh, extension so after saving it it will appear like this on my on the screen of my students so now my students can do this and rearrange the sentence, right, by uh, clicking like this, okay. Richard is uh, an expert software engineer of high repute and they can check it and they will get hints also. Now, thanks for watching. Until then, for creating all modalities of testing, in my third video, we are going to mash all these things into single question paper and we are going to post it to our students. That will be in the next video. Until then, stay tuned to me. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.